What's up everybody? Blue Gabe. I am headed offshore this morning. We just got back from a three day turkey hunt in Georgia. Our good friend Chasey ended up getting her first Eastern. Crystal and I struck out, but that's just the name of the game. If you've been following along much, you know I've been doing most of my videos on this pro drive right here because my contender has been down. I had to get new fuel tanks, new eyes and glass, a bunch of new stuff. This is my 224 Blackjack. I don't use it very much because I haven't been fishing inshore. Today is all about this beauty right here. Now Crystal is at home mounting ducks. She's a taxidermist. Jake, my 12 year old is in school. I gotta be back in today to pick him up at three o'clock. Luke, my seven year old is at home with the flu. So unfortunately it's just me today. I'm gonna show you guys how I take this big boat to the boat ramp, put it in the water by myself, head offshore, catch enough fish for dinner all by myself. And I have a feeling once the fishing's over, I'm gonna show you all some other cool stuff that we're getting into. Now for those of y'all that don't know, I live in Stewart, Florida. I don't live on the water. So I have to trailer my boats everywhere I go. And this one right here is a beast. The boat itself is 31 foot, but when it's on the trailer, it's actually closer to 40 foot. When you're making turns, you gotta make wide ones. So we got home late last night from Culloden, Georgia, where we started hunting. I actually took Crystal and Chasey um, the first morning I put them two by themselves and they're the ones that don't turkey hunt very much and I went off by myself. Well, lo and behold, Crystal Beachy called in a big beautiful bird. Actually, two beautiful birds and Chasey was able to harvest one. It was her first Eastern ever. Then we left Culloden and went over to Macon and hunted a new spot, then left Macon and went to Blackshear, Georgia where my family has a personal farm. And once again, I leave Crystal behind so she can hunt a bird and I go hunt a bird with my good buddy Richard Harris, who him and I have never struck out together. Crystal called in a bird. She wasn't able to kill it, but at least she had some action. Richard and I heard nothing but crickets and big old mosquitoes. So Crystal's been on a roll lately. One thing I'm trying to do with her instead of doing all the work for her, because you don't learn when somebody does that for you, I'm trying to put her in the right location in the right spot and let her learn how to call these birds in and figure out the do's and don'ts to turkey hunting because I think she'll appreciate it once she starts killing birds on her own a whole lot more than if I just flop down with her and call the birds in for her. And right now she's batting 100 and I'm batting a whopping zero. So it's working out for her. So this is my favorite area in Stewart to pull this big boat with this big truck. I'm at the corner of Dixie Highway and Salerno Road and we're about to go through some tight gaps. If you've never pulled any kind of trailer before, this can get to be pretty difficult certain times. Now right now there's not much traffic, really hardly any at all. It's nine o'clock in the morning, but right up here is a tight squeeze. And you also gotta remember when you're pulling a boat, you see these tree limbs, see those tree limbs? You see the radar up there on the top of my boat? That's $7,000 I just spent. You can't hit these tree limbs. And up here they get really, really low. See that limb right there? Oh, yeah, I had like six inches to spare. You can't hit the curb on either side. Now some of y'all pull trailers and you're probably like, this is no big deal. Well, jump on this old 31 and pull it through these tight gaps, especially right here on this turn. Look at that tree limb. No room to spare. Now here's the Valrio, is I guess how you pronounce it. This is the tackle shop that I always stop at because I can get gas and it's really close to the boat ramp. The good thing about this morning is the last time I used the boat on the way in, I filled it up. So I don't need to get gas, but I do need to get bait. Look at that big old boat. This place pretty much has everything you can imagine. And we need, so they got little boxes of squid, shrimp. That's not what I need. I need the big short fin squid. They've got big trolling lures. They've got goofy jigs, snacks. Pretty much all the hooks and line you need. Got some traps. All kinds of stuff over there. I pretty much got you covered. Most importantly, the Mountain Dew. Look here, folks. The breakfast of champions. Old Mountain Dew and a Snickers bar. 
Now, one thing I will tell you about this bait shop in particular, they are expensive. A good bit more expensive than most bait shops, but it's a convenient thing. It's a quarter mile from the boat ramp. It's really one of the few gas stations in Stewart where I can pull this big boat up to the pump and get gas and not be in some tight jam. Sometimes you just gotta bite the bullet and pay more for certain things because of convenience. So this is it. This is our local boat ramp here in Stewart, Florida called Sand Sprit Park. Actually, quite a few people out today. It's been rather windy today. It's pretty calm, so I'm excited. Tomorrow's actually supposed to start getting rough again and it's supposed to be rough for like the next four days five days probably but this is the most important part i want to show you guys how to do this boat ramp in a timely manner never be these people and park right in the way never you pull over here and get out of everybody's way just like so so on this particular boat i use a strap to sort of keep the bow down i probably don't need it it's just for safety reasons and then obviously I just got one strap here. Now you notice I don't have any ropes on my bow. I'm going to show you how I do it. This isn't necessarily how I recommend you doing it, but this is how I do it. And there's a lady standing right in the way. Come on. You know what I just thought about? I don't know if the plug's in the boat. Okay, it's in. When you get in a rush, you still gotta check the most important thing, and that's the plug. Easy peasy. Now I can go park the truck. I try to do everything I can as fast as I can at the boat ramp because everybody is wanting to get in and out as quick as possible single most important thing you do when you're on somebody else's boat at the boat ramp and i think all boat owners are about to say he's so right wash your feet off before you get in the boat because if you don't you will leave black footprints everywhere now normally i put the fish up in the front of the boat today because it's just me i brought my gator cooler i got one for the fish and bait one for the drinks got my lp three spinning rods two conventionals and a gaff Got my GPS's on. This is the one I use for the bottom machine, AKA depth finder. This is the one I use for the chart. See my Seymour maps. I have no idea what I'm gonna go for. I think I'm gonna go for tile fish and beeliner snapper just because that's probably the easiest thing I can figure out right now with not have fishing in the last, God, really three weeks. So never know, I might catch a cobia, might catch a mutton snapper. We're just going fishing. If I don't get run over by the sailboat first. And it's beautiful. It's overcast, but it's beautiful out. She's acting like she's fixing to tie up at the boat ramp. I know they ain't pulling that thing out. Dang, she didn't even wave, y'all. He did. At least one of the two of them is friendly. Man, if somebody looks at you and waves, even if you're in a bad mood, wave back because it's the right thing to do. I try to wave at everybody. So from right here where I'm at to where I want to go fishing, give or take, is about 20 miles. That's my farthest spot. Everything besides that will be a little bit inshore and closer. So I don't have that far of a run. Got 180 gallons of gas in the boat. It holds 300, so I can go anywhere I want right now.
Y'all see where that rain cloud is? Unfortunately, that's where we gotta go. I don't think I gotta tell y'all that it's gonna be a beautiful day offshore. Hopefully I don't have any chocolate on my mouth. We'll see y'all out there. I've got about a 30 minute run. We'll be fishing soon. So I just got out here and I'm only about 10 miles offshore and I actually got to go about 18 and I'm right pretty much at the mouth of this storm. Look, there's a water spout, right? Where did it go? Right there. See it right there? It's hard for me to hold the phone still, but it's there. I kicked on my new radar just to see how bad this storm is. I've got it zoomed out to 16 miles, so that storm actually looks like it's about 2 miles wide and about 40 miles long. This little line has me going straight into it. What do y'all think? Leave a comment below. Should I go fishing or should I not go fishing? If y'all had even the slightest doubt that I wouldn't go fishing, you don't know me very well. We're going. And unfortunately, I don't have my frog dogs with me. Looks like we're getting wet. I can tell you the temperature dropped about 10 degrees. You can cut some glass with my nipples right now. It's chilly. Just like that, we're here, folks. Now this current is absolutely screaming. I've got four hooks with a squid on each hook. They are messy too. What I'm about to show you is one of the hardest styles of fishing I do especially out here in this extreme current. We're going after big old mud guppies. Got a big, huge weight and heavy tackle. I'm in 746 foot of water and I'm gonna start letting this down, but it's not like your normal style of fishery. I need to make sure I'm going the right way. Here, it's all about controlling the boat. Got to make sure I'm facing due south. Watch my compass. And I'm just letting this line fall as fast as I can. Now this number you see here is not feet, it's revolutions for this spool. It's a little bit less than a foot each time it goes around. Got to be close to getting to the bottom now. I'm letting out a lot more line than it is deep, but I'm going to drift back on it and then get it fishing straight below me and I should get a bite pretty quick. About 1200 foot of line. It doesn't look like it's on the bottom yet, but I know it is. It's all about that rod tip right there. Just looking for, just like that. I know it's in the bottom now and it should pop out of the mud here pretty soon. You'll see that rod tip, there you go. It just popped out of the mud. really dark and muddy down there where these fish live. Uh oh. Might already have a fish on. I already got a fish on. Look at that folks. It didn't take very long. Now you can see the line still way out there, but actually the bait's probably way over there. I really despise fishing with a GoPro on my head. I just look like a goofball, but when you're filming by yourself, it's the only way I can show you guys exactly what I'm doing. 500 feet. 
He's starting to fight now. The cool thing about this LP is it's variable speed. I can speed it up or slow it down. I'm trying to maintain course on my boat and fight this fish. You don't want this line to get up underneath those props. It's fish. This weight is super heavy. I'm actually gonna take it off because you can only have one tile fish. So all I needed is one. It's not the biggest tile fish in the world, but it's just me and Jake eating dinner tonight. And there he is. Easy killer. This fish right here will be phenomenal for dinner. Look at that. Beautiful fish. I'm gonna go ahead and put this rig up and I'll show you how I store it. That snap swivel right there, that's tight. This is what we call an L bar. It just helps with my drift when there's a lot of current. And you saw I got a bite literally in a second. This is what attached to the rod, this is what attached to the weight, and this is what attached to the line that the bait's on. So it just lays a lot flatter on the ground when it's drifting, super fast like that. That's a unique creature right there. These fish, you don't need to bleed them. They're not a real bloody fish. Put my squid in there. Now we can go fishing. I'm gonna go try to catch a snapper now on my rig up here. So we're just pulling up to this spot. I actually ran by another spot on the way here. Current still screaming over three and a half miles an hour, but we're a lot shallower now, so I think I can potentially catch one of these fish. Look at all that. Some of that's the structure and then some of that's the fish. I gotta go way out ahead of it though to get my bait to hit the bottom in front of it. Tell you what, it's pretty fun out here doing this by yourself. It'll test your limits. Just hit the bottom. And we're marking fish. Much better fish that time. Much better fish. You notice I'm not pumping, I'm just reeling. Ah, this one might keep. Another annoying thing about beeliners, they'll all be about the same size, so if what you're catching is short, they'll all be short for the most part. Let's see. You gotta remember to close their mouth when you're measuring them. This one's a keeper. My gosh, they're hitting hard. Oh, oh. I don't know what this is, but it's big. This ain't no beeliner. Whatever it is, it's pulling. I'm gonna have to pump this one up a little bit. Remember, I only got 40 pound test, so I can't do a lot real hard. The bad thing is, is I don't 100% know where this GoPro is pointing, so I'm trying to move my head to make sure y'all are getting to see plenty. Oh God, there's a shark on him. It's a big old snapper. Look at the huge shark. Oh, genuine red snapper. You don't catch very many of these here. But I just caught one and he almost got ate by a shark. Hooked right in the corner of the mouth, right where we want him. This fish has no idea how lucky he is. I was reeling super fast. Hey, Dad. What up, G? Here's some of Blake's homework. 
Oh, you're gonna do him like that, huh? <laughs> Guess what I've been doing all day? Uh, cleaning, turkey hunting, something like that. Fishing, son. Fishing, thanks. Were you wishing you were fishing? No, Why I'm are you sorry. so hot and son? Don't take the stinky socks off in the truck. We're playing king of the court again. Your feet or stink was, when you do that. We were on nine on eight. We won. You won. Yep. What do you want to do this afternoon? I'm not sure. I don't know yet either. I don't know what we're gonna get into. Part of me wants to hook up to the duck boat and go bass fishing. The other part of me, my good friend Tom, who runs Lindsay Marine and Stewart, has a John boat for me that's gonna be perfect for our fish camp in Georgia to do limb lines on. I'm still tossed. I don't know what to do yet. I've already sprayed the boat down. I didn't wash it. We gotta clean the fish. You and I gotta cook dinner. I think I'm gonna let Jake cook one fish and I'm gonna cook the other. Friendly competition. Hey what it is Jake was starving and you guys let me tell you about the old Popeyes Jake got the classic chicken sandwich why are your hands green art class art class is the worst class what were you doing this tissue paper stuff that you gotta like wet <laughs> I don't know. let me tell you guys about this new fried flounder sandwich that Popeyes has I don't know if it's as good as the McDonald's fish and filet, but it's knocking on its door. <laughs> Y'all look who it is, Mr. Flu himself. Are you feeling better? Mm -hmm. Look at me. Are you feeling really good though? Yes. Come on, let's show him the goats. If y'all follow along, you see that Luke has goats and she had three babies and here they are. They are getting big. Look, that one's got blue eyes. Uh oh, watch out, you're about to get head butted. That one's got blue eyes too. Oh, this is a little Billy. They're gonna get you. That one's the girl. And then look at this one. He's acting like a little boy. He's... What's up, dude? Pick him up. Can you pick him up? He's way too heavy. What's the name of this chicken? Reba. Does she think she's a goat? Oh, it's a long story short. So my brother's pig that he showed. A this year and stepped on her toe and now the other chickens are not very happy with her and she just stays with the goat so she's a chicken that thinks she's a goat that's so crazy I don't know why she comes in oh this one just headbutted me look at him he's you'll be lamb chops if you don't be careful my cousin named that one Star. This one is Cracker, and that one's Bully. Oh yeah, what's her name? This one used to be Bully because he was mean, and then this one got bigger, and now he he's more meaner. This one's still mean. He's headbutting me. Look at him. Ah, right, boy, I'll go get Redneck and put him on you. This this one hurts more better when he jumps on your back. All right, well let's go. Your brother's at the house by himself. We got to go get him boy let me tell you about this lindsey marine they got service they'll meet you at the boat ramp with your new boat let me go over here and give them a shout out i think tom though is going through a midlife crisis you guys he's preparing for like the apocalypse he's got him all kinds of, is this for beating off zombies or 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 your son tyler y'all check out lindsey marine pathfinder maverick hughes key west they got it all. Now for the main event, the SS Minnow. So the river that we've been making videos out of in Jessup, Georgia, the Ottawa Hall, it's, the pro drive is just too big and we're trying to find something smaller. Jake, I mean, catfish slime on the carpet is just not gonna oh, work. That's gonna be bad. Whoa, easy killer. We're going with a new Yamaha. Yeah. Put the life jacket on, Luke. You can't be an outlaw your whole life. I ain't used to driving like this, right-handed. You guys, we could not go on the boat without Luke busting out his fishing pole. Do you think you could have got a flimsier rod to throw a frog on? Throw it right up there now. That hole, son. It's right. 
can catch a fish and you owe me five dollars how come you always tell me i owe you some sort of money i'm gonna start charging you for lunch whoa 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 See, this is a good example for all you fishermen. Right there, both of the kids were at the fault. Luke should know where his lure is, but Jake, Jake should also be playing defense and watching for it. It's tangled up on a, oh my goodness. Who told Luke to bring a rod? You. I'm just Dad, going for the boat ride. Said, Let's go for the third attempt of you getting it in that cut right there. Where it's like it? a field goal. Throw it up in there, straight up in there. You gotta start using a stouter rod if you're gonna be throwing a frog. Go. Now we're talking. All right, we're gonna sit here and go over this boat. Leave a comment below if you think it'll be a nice boat for the Ottawa Hall. I think it will be. It's pretty sturdy. It's four foot shorter than my Pro Drive and will fit in those spots a lot easier. If you watched any of my last catfish videos, you see, for me to be able to pull my lines, I gotta use my trolling motor because the boat's just too big to get in there in that current. I think this boat will work. But we're gonna get a new motor and we're gonna sell this because this is actually a hard to find motor and it's pretty valuable. Oh, he made another good cast. All right, you guys, check out this massive catch. I don't know what I'm gonna do with all this fish I caught so many today. Luke, have you ever seen such a thing? A tile fish, come here Jake and show him up close. A tile fish is one of my favorite fish. Look how unique he is. He's got this little thing right here on his beautiful dorsal fin, big gaping mouth. And don't they have like a really sharp, yeah, they got a really sharp gill plate. Dang, that's sharp as a razor blade. Then we got one beautiful bee liner, and then we got one beautiful grunt. Now, a lot of people would consider this grunt a trash fish. And even myself sometimes, we use them for bait, but they're actually really, really good to eat. I'm gonna cook the grunt in the little bee liner for the boys for dinner. And the tile fish I'm taking to Jacksonville because my buddy Jeff that owns the river and fort in St. Augustine and the river and posts in Jacksonville is gonna cook this amazing fish up there for us for dinner one night. I will go ahead and clean it though. Come over here on this Can side. I clean that one? What are you gonna sword? clean it with, your sword? They're not a very hard fish to clean at all, but they do have a line of bones that runs the entire length of their body right here. I'm gonna go find my knife. This could get ugly. Luke's going to find a knife. Uh oh. Look at this meat though. Next up, the vermilion. That's a deer knife. Yeah, you can't use a, a deer cleaning knife. Son. There's a flay knife right here in my hand. <clears throat> Don't put that knife up. I know how to... Well, it's pretty in the pocket. Do we even have pockets? Look at this beautiful flay right here. Look at that. Let me show you what the side of this grunt looks like. Now, if you were having like a fish fry, cooking for a lot of people, you could catch a bunch of these grunts and scale them whole and fry them and it would be really, really, really good. With some grits? Some grits. Can I do the other side of him? That was my thoughts exactly, Luke. Look here. One teeny little flay coming right up. It's a small one, but you could dang sure catch a bunch of them. If we had one of those little mini fry pans, we could make it look big. Yeah. Look at that. And that's two bites. All right, so I left half the snapper for Jake to do and half the grunt for Luke to do. I'm not gonna film them though, because I don't want to put them on the spot. Don't cut your hand off. I try to teach the kids how to clean a fish, but not stand right over them. I have them watch me a lot, and then I say, here, you do it yourself. If you mess it up, it's your dinner. So this is vermilion, and this is the grunt. Look at that teeny little flay. Got some peanut oil going at 350 degrees. These little flays won't take but about a minute. Got some grits going. Got some poor boy garlic bread, just regular white bread with butter and garlic. 
You guys, this video right here, I uploaded it last week and it was doing phenomenal. Like as good as any video I've ever had do in the first 24 hours and then YouTube demonetized it. When YouTube demonetizes the video, it doesn't get very many views anymore and the ones that it does get don't count because it's demonetized. So I took it down, re-edited it and put it back up. I even write on the screen that that's what I did and a lot of people are making comments of course what you're what are you old you forgot that you already uploaded this one no that's why now the video will do as it's supposed that was like two full days worth of work there's no way i was letting it just go and it's a good memory of me and the kids and crystal so if you've seen the frog gigging video twice thanks for watching it twice if you haven't yet seen it check out my most recent frog video it's one of the best videos i've ever done luke how's the homework going good. what is four plus four eight <laughs> there you go you guys in my last video in the everglades where crystal absolutely spanked me fishing that's what she did it on you can believe if old blue gabe gets beat on something he's going to order a bunch of them no live bait needed these things are legit thank you dear god for this day thank you for dying on the cross for our sins please help this food nourish our bodies and thank you for letting us be able to catch these fish in jesus name we pray amen amen all right luke is that's it? the little piece of grunt that you cleaned try it no it isn't yes that is that is the piece that you cleaned i guess it's pretty good huh what do you think that fish is really good you had the grunt first that's what i'm saying so many people think grunt are trash fish but they're not now that's the snapper i guess we're going to dip it in some baking hot grits the grits just got done and they are so hot i'm going to be honest with you this I is like the, the best better. stuff the grunt's better look try this one now and tell me if you think the grunt is better it has so much like garlic or i went overboard with the seasonings yeah why why are you my biggest critic always <laughs> everything's good so this steak right here is left over from our turkey hunting trip in georgia so i just microwaved it up and the boys will eat it now you're just like grandpa walt anything mom cooked dad would say well it could have did this or it could have did that grandpa can't even cook instant grits yeah i know he tried to cook his instant grits one time grandpa walt did yeah and he messed it up it took him a while to figure it out <laughs> <laughs> Gramps, you just got called out. Another huge thing I want you guys to do for me is say a prayer for my mom. She just had major, major back surgery. She actually had it three days ago and it's not going as smoothly as they wanted it to. I don't think it's going really bad, but it's not going very smooth. She's 29 years old. She's my age. So y'all give her a thought and a prayer. She could use it. She had what? major back surgery. Yeah, Grandma Betty's only 29 too, just like me. And Redneck. That's our little dog if you're new to the channel, Redneck. All right, y'all got anything else you want to say to your fans? Y'all ready for Wyoming? So she, she was one years old whenever she had you. She was. She was one years old when she had me. No, she'd be 30 to be one years old. Just don't pay any attention to the math, Luke. It don't make sense. That's it, folks. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. But like Jake always says, until the next journey begins, this one's ending. It's time to get the heck out of shape. See y'all.